What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So I want to do a shout out. First thing, the homeboy Santos. He is from Baja and Mexicali. Paisa, 116%. Shout out to you, homeboy. And he shot me this really cool October sticker. It's cool, man. Thank you, brother. Also, shout out DJ, DJ Easy J. He's on SoundCloud, SoundCloud under that name. Also on Instagram and YouTube. He's a producer, produces music. He has really cool music. Check him out. DJ Easy J. So those are shout outs. And I want to also mention this shirt. I got this shirt like over a month ago. Homeboy from Philadelphia sent it to me. It's a bunch of Philadelphia neighborhoods. It's really cool. Someone, I have a lot of viewers out of Philadelphia. And one of them said, hey man, you showed a shirt. Philadelphia neighborhood, you didn't, you didn't show it that, that long. Throw it back up there so I can get a good look at it. And I decided to go ahead and wear it. I didn't wear it last time because this color blue, I don't like for some reason. It's not this color blue I don't like. It's I was wearing a shirt this color blue one night. And all kinds of terrible events happen. So I just think of that night when I see shirts this color blue. In fact, that night started off with this girl telling me, hey, why are you wearing a shirt that color blue? And I'm like, is it all blues you don't like or just this shade? Anyway, crazy night. If I have time into this video, I would talk about that. So... In this video, I'm going to talk about my brother, Ricochet. My blood brother. We have the same mom. I'm older than him, but since I have Peter Pan syndrome and cannot grow up, he's actually older than me. Sorry, bro. Now, he has done a lot of prison time like I have. Both of us have done two terms and several violations. I think I might have a year or two. I think I might have done a year or two more than him. Where's my damn water? I'll tear this place up looking for the water. Goodness gracious, I don't even have one here, you guys. Whoa, almost went to Pantech. Wait a minute, yes I do. Where were you hiding that little guy? He was all tucked in the corner. So, he's a homeboy. He's got a lot of respect for the homeboys. He doesn't go to prison anymore. He ended his career, GP status. People like doing time with him. He's a lot like me. Now, we don't look alike. You wouldn't think we're brothers by looking at us. But if someone said, hey, they're brothers, and then you saw us, you would get it afterwards. A lot of the same mannerisms. He talks fast. He's known for being a real funny guy, cool to do time with, and just a cool guy. People like him, good personality. However, him and I do not get along, not at all. And it's him, not me. I love my brother. Over the last couple of years, people have done interventions. My mom always says, hey, you guys need to talk. A couple of my cousins like, dude, what's wrong with you guys? How can you not talk? So I, you know, people do the number exchange. We call, start talking, and it only lasts for a month or two. We never, he ends up, it's always him. He ends up pulling away. For some reason, it's him. So let's get in a couple things. Let's go back and let's talk about some stories. Maybe we can figure this out. Why my brother and myself do not get along. I remember way back in the day, after I did my very first violation, back in 2002, I get out, moving with my mom, my stepdad, and my brother, and my sister there. This is when he first started getting the drug scene. After I did my first term, I got out. He's a little bit too young. My first violation, I get out now. He's in the drug scene. He's starting to mess up a little bit. And one thing that happened right away, he had a pair of RNA glasses in his room. I don't know if I asked him or not, but I just wore them. Start wearing them. First night I took off with them, they got stolen out of my car. I didn't have that long, I only had them one night, so when they got stolen, I didn't even realize it. Now it got, now he realized they're gone, he knows I took them, and he's got pissed off. He didn't voice that to me for several years, but it started off, he's like, man, he came to my fucking RNAs, and there's a little bit of bad blood there. But it was an accident on mine, he's like, dude, I didn't, you know, oh, I'm gonna steal his glasses. No, I just put them on, then they got stolen from me, and it's like, whoa, things happen like that. Also, I got out of my first, no, my second violation, Fuck, splinter. My first violation, the glass thing happens. Then, like I said, he's starting to dope, and he takes him to Oldale to his dope spot. The place he's hanging out, introducing me to his people. Some dude named Lonnie, and I already knew the chick. Her chick name was Cindy, and I knew her from, you know, days past back in the day. So now she's with this Lonnie dude, and my brother's hanging out over there all the time. Introduce me to them, I start hanging out over there. Then one day, I'm having, like, a bad day, just shit's no, no, not, not adding up for me. I go over there, and I steal his car. Shit, my bad. I walk in there, and I see his car keys on, on the entertainment center. I grab him. Some chick was sitting there. She's like, what are you doing? I was like, taking the car. When it got in there, the line dude was driving through. He's like, chasing me down. Mm, drove off. They end up chasing me. Three dudes getting a car. They fucking chase me. I get to the south side of Bear, so that's where I was heading. When I get out at this park, they get out two, three guys. They go, we just want the car, Spin, we just want the car. So I gave him the keys. But hey, I got to the other side of town, so I wanted. I guess I could ask for a ride instead of taking his car. Anyway, after that, they would not let my brother go there no more. And he got mad at me, playing that on me. I see it like this. I think that you already weren't your well, um, already weren't out your welcome there. If you guys were dogs and he really, you know, liked you, then it wouldn't matter what I did. He wouldn't tell you you can't come over. He'd just be like, hey, this is what your brother did. It's fucked up. And then knowing my brother, he would not have had my back. He would have had dudes back. He'd be like, yeah, I thought my brother. I can't believe he did that shit. 
So them saying, hey, you can't come up here no more because your brother did this. No, it's likely you wore out your welcome there. She's using that as an excuse. Not have you around no more. Be that as it may. So, I go do a violation. While I'm in there, I want to get a car that my cousin Scrap Diego has. It's in his backyard. He's living in Oladell. He's working. I had been talking about that car. Then I caught this violation. But while I'm doing the violation, my brother swoops in and gets the car. I don't know if he knew I was trying to get it or not. But I was like, what? Bum kicked. Like, I wanted that car. Then I looked at it like, dude, I'm getting ready to parole from from prison, nowhere to go, I can't go to my mom's pad, my brother's still living at home with my mom, I'm gonna have to scramble for a place, good thing, Scrappy ended up putting me up with a job, and I ended up getting like a motel room, a real scummy motel room, be that as it may, but yeah, I was looking forward to getting that car, and I couldn't because my brother got it, then he's coming over to my motel, hanging out with me a lot, but not hanging out with me, hanging out with this dude who lives next door to me, his name is Cecil, so he's over there hanging out with him all the time, it never means Cecil would bump heads, my brother seemed like he would take his side, so my brother's coming over in the car, and I'm like, fuck, I wanted that car, then he gets it impounded. Hell, I know because my cousin Scrappy is still in his name. The tow yard calls him. He calls me. Dude, your brother got the car and pounded. Happened to be on a Friday when I got paid. Let's go get it. So we get the car. I show up at the motel room. I walk in to my brother. Dude, I got the keys, bro. He's like, it's matter no motherfucker. I go, dude, either that or got, you lose it. He would rather it got lost, though, than me get it. I believe that. But I say, hey, man, I got it. I had the money. It's better than getting lost. And look, if you come up with the money, the 290 whatever I paid, bro, you could have it back. Which he did not come up with the money. I had the car, and he was mad motherfucker over that. Be that as it may. I end up catching a violation. I get out. I get out to a pretty decent settlement of like 30 G's. I look him up. I get him like a hundred bucks. Hey, I'm, my bad. Sorry about all that shit. With the car. We're okay. We're sort of cool. Whatever. I end up catching a stabbing. No, no. We are cool. I gained the hundred dollars. We're good. We're very cool. I catch a stabbing. I go in kind of jail and fight in a case. He does me real solid. He goes over to my roommate's pad where I was staying and gets all my clothes. Now, that's very important, man. This sucks. You'll be out there on the streets. You'll be accumulating things. And then you get busted. You go in and you usually lose everything. People go gaff all your shit up. So, it's very solid him to go get my stuff. No, the bad thing is, he went in there. All my clothes are dirty. Straight bachelor pad. I had a real big white laundry bag. With all my, and I had a $30,000 settlement. So, a bunch of nice clothes. They'd be dirty. I'd throw them in the dirty laundry bag. He didn't grab the laundry bag. He just a couple things that were hanging up and a couple of the shirts... And shorts that were clean off to the side. So a real small pile of clothes. And I had a big ass bag of dirty shit. He's like, I got your clothes, bro. Got out, did a year flat. Went to my mom's house. I saw the clothes he got. That's what you got? That ain't shit. Fuck, you forgot the dirty stuff. A little bit ungrateful is on mine. But it was cool that he did that. Another salt thing he did. I didn't see him that much time. That time either. I didn't see him that much. I ended up getting busted. Go back in. End up in the hole. As solid dad. He starts sending me money. It's something he's never done before. He sent me some money, a money order. I guess he's working, doing kind of good. Sent me some paper and some envelopes. I thought that was pretty decent of him. You know who else was sending me stuff then was the parole officer. If you're watching my video, I got my parole officer strung out. I explained how I hooked up with the parole officer on the streets, ended up moving to his house, getting him strung out on heroin, got the house raided. I went to jail. He ended up having to fight a case. When I'm in prison, I get a letter from him. One of the things I would tell him, though, when I was staying there, one of the reasons why he let me stay there is because I had this hustle. I used it on everybody. Since, I, since my father passed away from asbestos cancer, I was known for getting asbestos settlements. If, even if I did not have one on the way, I would tell people, hey, I got like five G's on the way. And they have no choice but to believe me because I hit them so often. I'm like, cool. And they show me some extra love that maybe they might not show if I had no money on the way. Use that to my benefit. So the parole officer guy is sitting there. I'm like, dude, I got like five G's on the way. So the house gets raided. I go in. He loses his job. He loses his house. All that shit it was bad for him. But he didn't make a bounce back, um, according to the grapevine. He writes me. I'm in the hole. He's like, hey, man, I got your clothes. I'm going to save everything for you. You still going to give me some money? I was like, yeah, dude, but I'm in the hole, man. You ought to send me some books so I have something to read. Now, he's college educated. So he, just, he got, I don't know if he's trying to be clever or whatever, but he sent me in some like philosophy books. I'm like, what's this shit? It's like I said, James Patterson, not Juan Patron. I know nothing about these fucking books you sent in. They were garbage. No one on the tier even wanted to read them. And anyone want to read this? It, no, no one wants to read this. Throw it in the trash. So, be that as it may. Uh, another bit of little ungratefulness on mine. Like, send me a book in prison. That was a horrible book. Instead of saying, oh, thank you. Appreciate the thought. And usually it's not always appreciate the thought. Sometimes like, dude, that thought sucked ass. Fuck that book. So, be that as it may. Where are we at? I get out from the whole... My brother and I are hanging out. I ended up getting a 10 grand settlement. No, I didn't get the pro officer guy. Nothing. Brought in my clothes. My brother and I are hanging out real tough. I ended up buying him some beat for his car. You know, some woofers and amp. I did that because I was rolling right in it. I wanted to hear the music too. But hey, he came up, got some beat for his cars. One night, he got really, really pissed off. I went to go hang out at my homeboy's house in Oildale. I was going to be hanging out with one of the homegirls, this punk rock chick that I had an on and off with. 
and there was a chick there. My homeboy who went to his pad is single. He's not known for having girls, but he had a girl this time. And they were not being lovey-dovey, so when you hang out that night, you didn't even know they were together. And that night when brother was, my brother was constantly flirting, hitting on this chick. Then when the night was done, we expired. I was going to retire to the room, the homegirl I have on and off again with. Then my homeboy retired to the other room with that chick. We expect my brother to sleep on the couch in the living room. He's like, what? He thought he was going to have action with that chick. Then he realized that my homeboy was with her. He just felt probably embarrassed. Whatever. He's like, fuck it, I'm leaving. I'm not going to hang out here on the couch while you're in that room with that chick. He's in that room with that chick. I'm just like some lame out here, you know, playing pocket pinball on the couch. Fuck that, I'm leaving. I go, dude, I got a bad feeling. If you leave, you're going to get busted, bro. You're going to get pulled over and get DUI. You're high, don't leave. He left. Sure enough, I got DUI. My mom said he's mad as fuck. He blamed me for that. And also, he introduced me uh, another one of his friends, a chick named TJ. And he was a bus, he got the DUI, I went over and I burned her, 30 bucks, but she disrespected me. I'm not paying her, it's like that $30, that was like, what I charge you for not robbing you, type of shit. So, he got mad, I figured he had my back, but he didn't. He was mad at me over the TJ thing, and then he went to jail, and my mom says, mad as fuck at you. So, anyway, I didn't see him, I went to jail, I got in, he went, back and forth. Next time I see him, I'm in Wasco, building C1, I have the keys to the building. For the whites, I'm on A side, he's on B side. The cops said him come over because I had like still 18 months up to do. He's gonna get out in two weeks and I'm not gonna see my blood brother for almost two years. So the cops would be cool, then come over, we'll hang out. Brings me $10 for the store in a bag, a jar of coffee, some soups, and some chips. As soon as he gives it to me, I hand it to this guy and I buy a joint. I'm like, cool, bro. I just score myself a hooter. He was mad as fuck over that. He's like, dude, I, I wanted you to use I gave you that stuff, so, you know, you can use it. I can give it to you by joint. But dude, why would you care what I did with it? You gave it to me, right? I'm going to trip on I got the keys to the building. I got a shot of coffee anywhere. Any one of these woods will give me a shot of coffee. And I got my own coffee. Who cares about that jar you gave me? I didn't need it. I'd much rather have the joint that I bought. You're going to give me a hard time about it? Shit. So he, I remember him being upset about that. Like, just to give me a hard time or what? You should be glad that I got the weed. You know, I'm going to have to love this shit. Be like, yeah, I'm glad I got your hooter on I me. Mean, if I've got 18 months to do, you're going home in 10 days. You really care if I got myself a joint? You're going to begrudge me that? So, what happened after that? I went and did my two years. He got out, came back in, got out. By the time I get out, he's in Chicago. Hits me up. I want to come to Bakersfield. Send him the money. I get out to over $100,000 in a paid off house. Real nice house. Send him, send for him. He comes from Chicago, moves in with me. This happened. It was crazy. It's summertime. Him and I are both scounding. We got drugs on us. We're high. We're driving the car. We got face tattoos, tattoos everywhere. Like I said, no shirts. We're driving. And I drive him right to a checkpoint. You know, you, before you know it, you're in a checkpoint, like, oh shit, dude, and there's like five cars in front of me, the cops, they're waving over, and like, dude, we're going back, bro, we're caught, we're busted, it's a wrap. I started to pull forward, I see this cop, it's a chick, a redhead chick, she looks at us, and she just waves us through. It's like, could not believe, waved us through, we would have been like the biggest bust of the day, two high-power, absconding pro leaves, got these big old fed felony warrants, beef fats looking for us, we got drugs on us, like you could have had a good one. Just waved us through, and yeah, they look harmless. Wow. So he's living with me. And you really start copping attitude. I wouldn't break him off no cash, but it's like, dude, you're living with me. We're the same size clothes. You're wearing my clothes. I'm keeping you high. You're taking my little Ford Focus and run around whenever you want, never bringing it back. And so he wanted me to break him off like five G's. Why? Why do you need money? You have everything that I have. You, you don't need money. You wanted me to get him an apartment. Why, dude? The cops are looking for you. You're going to go to jail. Spend all this money getting you an apartment. And what, you spend your, all your time over here anyway? It's like, why? So he got a little bit working on feelings. I never just broke him off a chunk. But I looked at it like, dude, taking care of you. I remember went to Vegas and I took him with me and I didn't plan on it, but I saw his eyes light up and I said I was going to Vegas. I'm like, dude, what? I'm not going to leave you here alone in my pad. Dude, I saw your face light up and you found out I was going to leave out of town and shit. You should need to be having more of a poker face. You're going with me, fool. So we're there and I go into Gucci. I'm going to spend like 2000 bucks on a Gucci backpack and he got all mad and stormed out. He's like, dude, you could have gotten me an apartment for that. Why would I get you an apartment? You live with me on my couch. You crap me up. If I've got your apartment, you'd still be all in my house all the time. Be that as I may. So... What happened after that? So yes, he just mad that I didn't really break him up, break him off, or hook him up. Anyways, we ended up getting a big fight. The house gets raided. We got a big fight. House gets raided two years later. Actually, for the longest time, I thought he ratted on me, snitched me out. But I didn't go around tell everybody he's a snitch or rat. I just catch it myself. But come on, kind of suspicious. We get a big fight like Friday night, Tuesday morning. The parole's there, busting me. But now I know the truth. I know that happened, and I know that. He did not snitch on me. So anyway, a bunch of things would happen in and out, both of us, this and that. And then let's bring you up more up to uh, present day. We're not getting along all that good. In 2018, January 2018, some shit happens. One of the last times we hung out, one of the last times I had an all-night binger, stayed up all night doing speed and heroin with him. We go back to his apartment, I crash out, and his, uh, one of his buddies overdoses on heroin. Uh, yeah, overdoses on heroin, dies. 
And they call his girlfriend, and she sends the police over. They come in. I end up telling my mom not to get him in trouble. This is gossip. My mom's on methadone. She don't give a fuck. I was like, damn, some dude just straight OD'd his house. I was there a couple days ago. My mom tells him, like, you know, why the fuck? He gets mad at me like I snitched him like my mom. But I didn't mean it like that. Present day. So from 2018 to, like, about last year, we didn't talk at all. Then I find out he has a job, and I'm needing a job. Ain't that a quinky dink? And I've got him several jobs. He's never got me a job. I found out he's doing air conditioning for a company I used to work for. Now, apparently, this company I used to work for shares a shop with this other company. My brother knows them. He went in to talk to them. They go, we not for, got nothing for you. This other company who I used to work for hired him. They had a bunch of work. So I worked there before. I know the boss, my, the owner. My brother's in there, plus their estimator. I've known him since my first term. I'm like, cool. I told my brother, you guys got a lot of work? He's like, yeah, I just got a big old motel. I go, word to Big Bird, bro. Shit. So I take a dozen donuts in there. I talked to the owner. I talked to the estimator. I was like, dude, give me a job. I need work. He goes, yeah, yeah, we'll be in touch with you in like a week. Didn't hear from him. I gave him two weeks. I call him. Straight voicemail. They're ignoring me. The estimator won't call me back. The owner, nobody. Finally, I trick a student named Paul. He's a shop foreman. Trick him into answering me because I call from a different phone. I'm like, dude, what's up? This is Chris. What's up with some work? He goes, I don't know what your brother say. Like, who cares what my brother says? You're the shop foreman. What are you saying? You got work or what? Can I come show up at work? He's like, no, no, no. Let's talk to your brother. See, my brother went in there and hated and shut all, shut all down for me. Couldn't get the job. And I needed the fucking job at the time, too. Damn it. But what it was, he was chipping on some boxings. Because he came by my house. I jammed him up. Said, hey, dude, I can use a little bit of cash. And, and borrow 10 bucks. He goes, I'll, I'll, I'll come over. I'll bring some cash. He broke out a big old wad of cash. I think he just wanted to show off. and gave me $40. He's like, yeah, I'm going to get you this job. I'm going to get this job. It's all good. Then he left and he called me like about 10 minutes later. He's like, I'm at this yard sale. Let me come get that 40 from you because I I'm, I, I want to buy the stuff for the yard sale. And I go, do go to ATM. Y'all gave me this 40. He can't have a back already spent. He goes, how do you spend it? I saw I ordered some weed and the weed's on the way. Oh, he bought weed with the money? Yeah. What do you care? But he was telling me he was going to give me the job. Damn, at that time when he came over. And I know if he would have came and got that 40 bucks from me, he would have never got it back either. So, yeah. I never even talked to him. He did not give me the job. And I have not seen him since, have not talked to him since, I didn't talk to him on Christmas, I didn't talk to him for New Year's, my birthday's coming up, his birthday, I just don't talk, we don't get along, I don't know why he hated on me to give me the job, probably thinks I was going to tell him for, for taking the suboxins, chipping away at those, but I'm on methadone, dude, what do I give a fuck for? I need to earn a living, I think he just don't want to see me do good, he don't want to see anything good happen for me, that's what I think. So, what else should I say? Yeah, just on the blue shirt, man, just way back in the day, I was in my grandma's house drunk. One of my homies comes and picks me up with two chicks. He says he wants to go to open night, open mic night, whatever that is. He thought he can go to Hollywood at some club, and there'd be open mic night. You can get up on stage, just rap, like, hey, hand me that mic. I'm going to do some rapping. I'm like, dude, wouldn't there be, like, a line around the block? I just can't picture him to open mic night. He's like, yeah, we're gonna open mic night. I'm drunk. They come pay me up, him and two chicks. I didn't throw it up in the car. It smelled real bad. I had a blue shirt on this color. I worked for a company called Valley Sun. I said, Valley Sun, the chick's like... Why do you, uh, got a shirt that color blue on? So make fun of the shirt. Threw up in the car, like I said. Smelt real bad. We drove all the way to L.A., got lost. We're in the rain. Ended up going to a motel room. We take the top mattress off the bed, throw it on the ground. Homie and one girl gets there. Me and the other girl get on the other part of the bed. We're just laying there and talking. All of a sudden, she jumps up, tells some girl, let's go. And they leave. And we're in L.A. And we're like, what the hell? All night, the sun comes up. It's going to be checkout time. We're like, what the fuck are we going to do, dude? How are we going to get out of here? They just left us. Finally, she comes back, takes homie, and drops that girl off. And they leave. And that's when she tells me hey, the reason she got mad because dude couldn't perform. And a lot of times the girls take that personal. Usually it's not the girl's fault, it's just the guy. The drugs, the alcohol got in the way. I mean, if he's already in bed with you and, un, you know, undressing, and obviously he's with it and he can't perform, it's just these are the drugs, the alcohol, I guess. Girls take it personal. She did. She got up and split. And then she came back, like I said, dr- picked on me up, dropped that chick off. Now we sat there for a long time, like, fuck, is she going to come back or what? It's just stressful. She finally did come back, and it was just some bullshit. And then it's like, why do you have that kind of a blue shirt on? Huh? So what else? About all I got, man. Cut a string and let it fly. Peace.